It's time for more GLaDOS. And if you clicked on this video, then you're in the right place because I'm building an animatronic version of GLaDOS that can do all kinds of fun things. But even if you're not a fan of the Portal franchise, maybe you just like seeing cool robots and that kind of thing. So stick around and let's get to this week's video. This force is called voltage. Now watch what happens as soon as I turn the switch on. So as you can see, I've got GLaDOS right here. And in the previous two videos, I made her eye light up and blink and slide and tilt. And now it's time to give her head more structure. And that includes these outer pieces, which don't mechanically do anything, but they're part of her design. These are only made out of plastic, styrene, and ABS because they don't actually need to support much of anything, really just their own weight, and also these headband things, whatever those do. After that, I decided to move on to her ear pucks, which are very interesting. I decided this is a good spot to put some speakers, so this is actually where you'll hear her voice when she's actually powered up, and I've got a 10 watt, four ohm speaker in each ear puck, and these just mount to the side. Next up, I'm gonna talk about these weird little spoke things, which you might have seen in the last video, but I didn't talk about them, because these are the attachment points for her outer shell. So her outer shell is a pretty big piece of her design, and I want a simple way to attach it that doesn't involve a million screws like the rest of her body. So I designed these to have magnets. There's one on each spoke, and a receptacle for another magnet on the inside of her shell. So I'll be able to pop her head pieces on and off and easily repair or take her apart, which I think is pretty nifty. And next is her neck, which consists of this bent metal plate, which was really fun to make because I don't have a metal brake, but I still figured it out. This has some ports at the top, one for audio, one for power, and one for USB. It's a USB-C panel mount jack, which will connect to the internal microcontroller that's gonna run all of the servos. Moving lower, we've got this flanged rod, which pops into this weird ball thing. This whole design element is based on the back of her neck, so that's why it's kind of funky. This attaches to a universal joint, which allows everything to be flexible along two axes which is just a really fun part for only like a few bucks. And this attaches to her neck assembly, which is so overly complicated. But once again, it's because I wanted to look how it does in the game. So I've got the universal joint at the back of her neck and lower I've got two connecting points, which are where I've got these push rods. Now these push rods have rod ends so that I can tilt her at different angles and these are driven by servos. This is a fun little nano servo you can pick up for a few bucks. It has, in theory, 1.8 kilogram centimeters of torque at its maximum rated voltage of six volts, which means at one centimeter, it should be able to lift 1.8 kilograms. Now, that's certainly not gonna cut it. So I picked up some of these. This is an ASMC servo, which in theory, is a 180 kilogram centimeter servo. And they're very, very beefy. And these are mounted via this bracket, which screws into the base plate, which mounts to the wall via this very well-engineered tube. This is just a temporary mount, as usual, because I haven't finished designing the wall mount. There's still a lot going on and I think I might wanna stuff all the electronics back there too, so that's gonna take me some time. But not too long, I promise the next video won't take over a month for me to get to. Expect more regular updates.
All right, so it's getting pretty late, but I am going to finish and this video is going to go out in a few hours. I'm going to start by testing out one of her motors just in case something goes wrong and then I'll try both at the same time. Here goes nothing. All right, round two uh, of the motor test. Decided to glue the rod with a little super glue, so let's see if that'll hold it in place. And I've let it cure for about an hour and also hit it with some accelerant. It's still a little tacky though, so we'll see how this holds. All right, so it looks like I have a couple of kinks to work out. I need to very securely mount her to the wall. Obviously there is enough torque to rip her own head off, which is fun. And I need to make sure that all of the tolerances for all of the shafts that mount her rod ends much tighter. And I'm definitely going to add some sort of like spring loaded uh, cable system that holds her in place so that she's not quite as wobbly and doesn't flop down when she's unpowered. All right, I'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.